Uh, meanwhile, uh, Jim, he did talk about stock sales. I know you were commenting on that on Twitter this morning, uh, the 10 b five ones. He says not amendable uh, because of company policy, not anything external. Totally company. Okay, well, there's also this thing called the government. But maybe he thinks that there's some sort of commerce clause. Uh, look, the government doesn't want you to trade. So when you get to the uh, period when you announce everybody has the same information, you cancel your plan. Plans can be canceled. The government doesn't want you to be out there doing anything with your stock when you're in a situation like Moderna's in. And you should not be able to get comfort from your counsel. Now, look, counsel can say whatever they want, but there is uh, a, a view that the SEC has, which is that please don't trade during these periods when you have something, some information. And please cancel your plan. Uh, you get no comfort if you continue to sell. If you stop, you get comfort. And it's about comfort. And I don't know how they feel comfortable, given the fact that every time I pick up the paper, it's more about them selling than it is about what's going on in Moderna. I also don't like the idea that you can put a time, any time frame on it. October optimistic. Then don't talk about October. Just say, listen, we hope to have something by the first quarter. Don't set us up. Uh, because if you have that, then people are going to say in the House and in the, in the Senate, look, we don't need to do another program. If we're going to get a vaccine by October, let's just let the dice roll. Let's have the mass and social distancing play it out. And I think that that's not a good uh, that's not an optimum situation. So uh, Moderna has been setting the pace of over optimism and overselling. And when I, I liked Moderna at 20, but I think that it's time to start saying nothing. And saying nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. Just saying, let's see what happens. But the people who set us up are the people whom we're going to most dislike come the fall. David, you know you shouldn't be setting people up like this. No, you've made the point that you think this company is, a, 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 if I could say the words, a bit more promotional, Jim, mm -hmm. than you would like to see. And, uh, But to be fair, I mean, we have also seen... Pfizer, a company that I would not lump in as promotional at all, feel like they're obligated to release patient studies that involve, what, 48 people uh, for their vaccine. So, I, I mean, like there is such a need to know here that you are we do expect all the companies at this point to tell us anything along the way in terms of their progress towards a vaccine. How about J&J? &J? Why not use the J&J &J Alex Gorski standard, which says hopes to have results in the first quarter, even though he's enrolling 30,000 this week? Uh, 30,000, including people who are over 65. So why don't we just take it from the company that I think is the gold standard? Now, there'll be people out in the audience saying gold standard for talc. But I do think in terms of disclosure, J&J &J is getting some very good advice. Uh, and people should, big companies should take the, this view. I, Novavax, uh, for all their earlier promotion, I think has been quiet enough to make me feel better about them. I just don't want false hopes. As Ken Frazier would say, there's nothing worse than false hopes. Ken reports on Friday where we have Caterpillar, Exxon, Chevron, and Ken. Uh, and that's going to be one. There's so many pivotal days this week, Carl, that I think by the end of the yeah. week, our heads are going to be spinning, uh, not unlike Reagan. Uh <laughs>